Pre-implantation genetic diagnosis refers to the ability to remove genetic material from a developing embryo and analyze that genetic material for some kind of genetic abnormality. There are three main types of abnormalities we can detect through embryo biopsy. The first is when we're looking for a known genetic mutation or a single gene defect. For example, diseases such as cystic fibrosis or spinal muscular atrophy are caused by genetic mutations. We can detect these genetic mutations within a developing embryo before it's transferred into the uterus. The second type of abnormality is a chromosomal rearrangement, such as a chromosomal inversion or balanced translocation. These types of abnormalities frequently lead to miscarriages or birth defects. The third type of chromosomal abnormality is an aneuploidy. This is when a developing embryo has an abnormal number of chromosomes, and this can occur spontaneously. Common examples of aneuploidy pregnancies are Down syndrome or Turner syndrome. When we perform embryo biopsy specifically looking for aneuploidy, we refer to that as pre-implantation genetic screening, or PGS. When we're doing embryo biopsy looking for a specific genetic mutation, we call that pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. When we're doing pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, we know ahead of time that one or both of the parents carry some kind of genetic mutation that the child is at risk for inheriting. So we can screen the embryos for those particular mutations before transferring them to the uterus and only use unaffected embryos. This should eliminate the possibility that the pregnancy is affected with a genetic abnormality. Aneuploidy typically occurs when an egg with an abnormal number of chromosomes becomes fertilized. Instead of having the normal number of 46 chromosomes, an aneuploid embryo will have something like 45 or 47. And in most cases, this abnormality will be lethal and the embryo will stop development. So aneuploid embryos rarely implant in the uterus, and if it does, it will most likely end in a miscarriage. Very rarely will aneuploid pregnancies result in a viable pregnancy. So PGS is advocated in certain situations to increase the chances of transferring a genetically normal embryo and minimizing the chance of a miscarriage while maximizing the chance of a healthy pregnancy. How is PGS performed? Well, in brief, the female patient will take injections daily of fertility medications to stimulate her ovaries to produce a group of eggs to develop all at one time. Those eggs will be retrieved and fertilized through a process called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. This is when a single sperm cell is injected directly into the egg to make sure that there's only going to be 46 chromosomes per embryo, 23 from the egg and 23 from the sperm. Once the egg is fertilized, the embryos will develop for five to six days. Usually, only a minority of the embryos that were created will develop into healthy embryos after five or six days of development. But at this stage, a few cells will be taken from each embryo and frozen. Those cells will then be shipped to a genetic laboratory. The embryos will also be frozen shortly after the biopsy. Once the genetics labs receives the sample, they'll go through an analysis process called next generation sequencing. This technology is the latest technology to analyze the chromosomes and it will allow us to look at over a million different data points within the chromosomes. After a few days, we'll get the results back from the genetic testing, and we'll learn which embryos are suitable for transfer. So we'll have the patient come back to the office for a consultation to review this information, and then talk about how a frozen embryo transfer cycle will be performed. But in brief, the female will take some hormones for a few weeks, preparing the uterine lining for the embryo transfer. And on the day of the embryo transfer, the embryo will be thawed. Usually, we just transfer a single embryo into the uterus because the chance of implantation is so high and the risk of miscarriage is so low that transferring more than one embryo would result in a very high chance of a multiple pregnancy. In over 250 cases of embryo biopsy performed at Carolina Conceptions, we've seen an average pregnancy rate of 60%, and that includes patients up to the age of 41. And in most cases, only a single embryo is transferred. But in some cases, there aren't any embryos available for transfer, 
because they all prove to be genetically abnormal. PGD is a rapidly evolving process, and not all centers have the expertise to perform this. Furthermore, not all IVF centers who do PGD are capable of doing day five and day six embryo biopsy. So if you're considering PGD or PGS, it's important to make sure that your IVF center has the experience and the success with this procedure. The process of embryo biopsy still isn't perfect. There are definitely some challenges and some limitations of the procedure, and it's important that you discuss these with your reproductive endocrinologist before you start this process.